Hello, welcome to Elton Reads Book a Week, uh, the only podcast on the internet. Uh, I can't even start my own shit. Welcome to Elton Reads a Book a Week, the only podcast on the entire internet that fucks up its own opening. My name is Elton, and I read a book a week. This is a tiny shortened episode because this is actually part two of the previous episode. So if you haven't listened to that one, go listen to that one. That's uh, Dean Koontz. This is, this is Dean Koontz's Lightning. It's Lightning by Dean Koontz, part one. That's the uh, episode before this one. But this isn't, it's part one of this episode. So go listen to that one first, then come back here and, you know, jump past this because you're hearing this now, so you don't have to hear it again. And then just cut and just jump into the episode, which is the part about the person in the attic I was mentioning in the first part of the uh, Dean Kuntz's lightning episode, part one. The guy I'm talking about being in the attic with me, that's what this is right here. So if you listen to this uh, first, it's out of order. So go back, go listen to it. It'll be fun. We'll have more time together. And I know how awesome that is. Oh, and uh, if you like what you hear and um, you like all the other stuff, the part one, go listen to that first. And you like this part two, feel free to contribute to the podcast on patreon.com. Uh, I'll put the link um, in the description of this uh, episode part two episode thing. Or if you want to leave me a message like Viking Power did on Anchor.fm, uh, you can do that too. And, uh, you know, follow me on all the social medias and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm winging this right now. Usually I write these things out, but I didn't do it this time because I felt lucky. And that is never, ever goddamn good because, shit, just listen to this. It's fumble. Fuck. It's just being st- just shit. Okay. So let me get out of the way here, um, and then I'm going to play the message from Viking Power first because that's what I do. I love you guys, and uh, I love all all my listeners and stuff. So if you want to leave me a message on there, um, you'll be included in the episodes. Um, I'll I'll include it if you don't if you know if you don't mind. You know he doesn't. I know he doesn't. But if you want to leave me a message and you don't want it on in an episode, that's cool too. Not a big deal, but you can leave these messages at anchor.fm and uh, I'm going to play him right now uh, so you can hear what he sounds like. And he's uh, a little bit amazing, just so you know. So get ready for that. I had to clean it up a little bit. It came uh, out a lot weird, uh, a lot weird. What kind of fucking, why am I even, <sighs> it came out a little weird because it sounded like he was in a fucking wind tunnel. Like he was. Like he was skydiving when he when he recorded this message for me. So here it is. By far the absolute best book reading ever. Funny, informative, sweet, sassy, sexy, just the greatest stuff I've ever heard. I absolutely, hands down, love it. I love listening to it. I love when you produce a new episode. I love everything about it. Don't stop. Keep going. Greatest stuff. Love it. Aw, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I love you, too. Love you, too, man. Damn it. Every interview should be like that. All of them. Thank you. So appreciate that. You, you fucking keep kicking ass all day long. Because you're fucking, you're amazing. You're, uh, you're fantastic. Thank you. So, this is part two of... The Lightning by Dean Koontz episode. Here you go. Uh, But first, the intro. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire.
Bravi, brava, bravo. Well done, Elton. Now you interject. Yeah. Listener, this person is who I referred to at the beginning. He's here to explain why this time travel bullshit is happening to me. I simply wanted to compliment you on the job you've done on this episode. Very informative, though I've never heard of Dean Koontz. I feel now I'm very compelled to peruse his work. Especially this lightning you spoke of, as it seems to fall in line with much of what I do and partly who I have come to be. Well? Well what? I th- I thought you were going to say something. I'm waiting on you! Who the fuck are you? What the fuck is going on here? I've been tossed through time like an asshole, fumbling and hiding, doing episodes and shit. There are notes, and notes for me? What the fuck? What the oh, that's fuck very is easily happening? easily explained. I asked you, you of a different time, that is, to leave you various notes and things to further this along and keep you busy. You're a very hostile person, Elton. Given that this is entirely your fault, I can't say that I'm obliged to sympathize with you regarding your predicament. Still, I am concerned about your elevated heart rate. You're going to give yourself a heart attack if you don't calm down. Calm? I'm hiding in an attic, afraid I'll destroy the universe because I fart too loud. Oh, you give yourself too much credit. I've seen far worse things happen that haven't ended the universe. Like, well, did you know that England was never supposed to be a monarchy? No, a a horrific bumbling that was. Part mistaken identity, part anachronistic mistake of my own prematurely introducing laudanum to the Scottish ruler of a petty kingdom. One brain-damaging dose and a lot of laughter later and... Why am I traveling in time? See, you're very hostile. Keep your blood pressure in mind. You should want to live a long life and not have it cut down by poor choices regarding overly emotional responses. An example I could point to is a lovely Parisian bistro owner named Paul. This must have been about 1932, I think. He was having an ongoing row with a flower shop owner across the Rue de la Esse. Things were not going well. Eventually, there was a bit of gunplay, and so often is the case. Regardless, after one brutally horrific death, a botched investigation, and lots of laughter later, everyone seemed to... Who are you? Why am I traveling in time? Why can't I go home? How the fuck do I get out of this? Please answer these questions. Please. Well, I... uh, Please. Well, I... Please, just the questions. But you see that... But you see that... Please just answer the questions. Very well. Please remember, I tried my best to ease into this little talk we're about to have, and any undue hostility that arises from it could have been avoided with a few nice anecdotes which could have been used to teach a lesson, a la never shoot a man related to an Angolan ambassador. As you might very well be hung in a town square and have a variation of the absolute worst French pastry named after you, pan a chocolat named le Paul le merde, but deserved. I can see someone is a little testy and worse for the wear. And as much as I detest being rudely interrupted, given your extenuating circumstances, you are forgiven this time. I have most often been referred to as Marquis de Montfreyot, Comité Bellamere, Chevalier Schoening, Count Weldon, Comité Saltikoff, Graf Tsarogi, and Prince Rakotsi, and often, mistakenly, Comate de Saint-Germain. Though, this is a mistake. I'm sure you'd prefer one of my easier-to-pronounce names in the unsophisticated Brutus English tongue you speak. How about Count of Saint-Germain? You may have heard of me. I, I haven't. <clears throat> but... What? <laughs> Did ten pieces de mate? It's understandable. I, I have not interacted with this age as much as I have others, due to my own less than stellar history as of late. Still, allow me to give you an abbreviated version. Well, we'll move into more pressing matters afterward. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Great. 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 
Okay, I am the Count of Saint-Germain, son of Francis Duracolzi, educated by Jean Gastone de Medici. I am a diplomat, composer, musician, alchemist, inventor of textile dyes, entrepreneur of textile manufacturing, a former occultist, all-around adventurer, courtier, accidental time traveler, etc., etc. I'm... I am it's also a god to the Utilitisi people, whose descendants later became the Sun people of South Africa. Advisor to the Raduna Humano Council of Interplanetary Stuff and Things. Secondary Consul of the post-seventh Tussle of Terra Board. Treasurer of the International Slaughter Fan Club. Etc. Etc. I, uh, I am able to speak French, German, Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, English... Chinese, Latin, Arabic, and even ancient Greek and Sanskrit fluently, incapable of writing them with both hands at the same time while singing, etc., etc. Jesus. Oh, I've met him, a good fellow. His message seems to have gotten muddled over time, but who hasn't at one time or another? He was a little myth that I didn't buy a shelf from him. No bother. He makes a lovely stool. Next time I see him, I'll buy one. I need one for my library. You'd be hard-pressed to find a decent stoolmaker in Transylvania, especially when there is a war on. Do you mind focusing on shit pertaining to me, please? Yes, my apologies, and, um, rude goodness. Sorry, I'd like to know what the fuck this is all about. Yes, of course. Um, where, where was I? Uh, yes. Yes, you can call me Count. Or The Count. It's really of no concern to me. Just yell something at me before I'm hit by a streetcar. <laughs> yes, a, a joke. Not mine. Mind you. No, no. Told to me by another traveler. I was going off on a tangent again. Forgive me. Um, uh, oh, y- ah, oh, yes. Uh, uh Oh, uh, oh, yes. Your time travel problem is, frankly, your own doing. What? What? What did I do? Do you remember when you contacted Ed Sullivan? For the for the for the Christmas book? Yeah. Well, what? I I don't understand what this has to do with it. Mind the lid. Do you remember those words? Uh, vaguely. I mean, the the. They were handwritten on a label inside that Benjamin Franklin contraption you used to contact Mr. Sullivan. I mean, th- this was a while back. I-, I mean... They are there. I've seen them. You didn't heed them. Hence your time travel problem. What does the lid have to do with... I don't understand. Franklin put that there to tell himself that the lid often pops open slightly after communication via the box is severed. Though he thought it was merely a mechanical problem... As it happens, it's an energy expenditure problem. What? See, uh, uh, how, how would I uh, simplify this? Uh, okay. Oh, are you familiar with um, radiation? A little. Well, as the box is cranked up, uh, a special kind of radiation is built up to breach the uh, timeline, to reach the other party you want to contact. Upon severing the connection, energy is expended back into the line and often out of the mechanism that initiated the breach. Normally, this is a slight release, a a belch, if you wish to make light of it. Uh, Mostly it's harmless. In the case of the book you described, it's the lightning that accompanies Stefan as he jumps around in time. Well, Well, as I've come to understand it via your explanation. Yes, it equalizes the environment to compensate for the traveler's arrival, yeah. Well, that's something Kuntz got right, as that's what the slight belch does. Benjamin saw this happen, so he simply shot it, which was, unbeknownst to him, the wisest thing he could do. He is indeed a very smart, smart man, even unintentionally at times, For you see, by not completely enclosing the mechanism after use, that special radiation continues to emanate from the mechanism at a low, steady rate until closed. As it were, it would seem this energy collects in objects nearby, usually settling and then dissipating after the mechanism releasing the energy has been closed off. However, it has been found that when these objects move about... 
the more likely they are to activate this dormant energy, causing the bearer to jump around in time unpredictably. You've got to be kidding. That is, until such time as the energy is completely dissipated from within the object, more often than not, uh, returning the object to the point of its initial jaunt, if you will, not uh, back into tempus normalum. That's Latin for normal time or instant they left from. I think I'm going to be sick. There's no need for that now. We've taken measures to remedy your situation and closed the lid for you, <coughs> as well as made a few modifications to Mr. Franklin's temporal mechanism <coughs> that should fix the problem. We? Ah, uh, yes. That might need some explaining. Uh, the ability to travel in time has, up until this point, <coughs> been largely accidental. For instance, I discovered it quite by accident during experimentation in, in pursuit of the Philosopher's Stone. Much to my chagrin, it wasn't nearly as easy as your experience has been thus far. Easy? Easy? What the fuck is easy about hiding, sneaking around, and being terrified that I might end all of existence? Imagine waking up in Goblaki Tepa. A few minutes from being sacrificed to ancient gods and having to convince a prehistoric tribe that it would benefit them more to leave your entrails inside your body instead of neatly arranging them in a figure eight pattern beneath a stone rendering of a half wolf and half man deity. It's a tough sell, especially since they've invited family in from the countryside. I had to promise them six weeks of rain and a herd of goats and threaten to take the entire moon away. You've had a cake of a time, you have. I I, underst I understood roughly half of that. Well, count yourself lucky, even on understanding that much. So, so you're just fumble-fucking up around in time, too? Ah, uh, at first, yes, I was led to believe, just as you were led to believe. It's, it's, it's sort of a preparation period for, um... Uh, I think they, I think they were last called the Consortium, or something like that. It, it is often hard to keep up with all the names. You're not a member of this time travel group? No one wants to be a member of it. It's an absolute embarrassment. Everyone involved is simply trying to suss out what is happening, how to fix it, how not to break it even more, and wants no part in taking the blame for when it does. You see... Time travel isn't the fragile, fickle Chinese vase you believe it is. Yet, it is fragile and fickle. It's a lot of both. That makes zero sense. It's a huge, moving dilemma involving all manner of things, planets, universes, the multiverse, multiple timelines, multiple dimensions, and above all else, a lot of complaining. Mostly complaining. Mostly complaining about existence not being the return on investment everyone thought it was. That confused me even more. Right. Um, okay. Uh, right. Uh, imagine a crowded swimming pool filled with people and everyone wanting to swim full-length laps that run the length of the pool, yet... They all want to do this in all different directions, including up, down, sideways, kata, and akimbo, while holding ice creams and small sickly cats. That's, that's not, that's not better. Well, this isn't, oh, okay, okay, I'll try one more, and then we'll move on, regardless. Do you know who Mark Slaughter is? The singer from the... 80s band slaughter? That, that one? Yes. All right. Now imagine an infinite number of mock slaughters of varying ethnicities, ages, likes, dislikes, etc., all vying for importance in a realm that has no idea what the concept of importance is, nor cares to, and often confuses it with a kind of odd shortcake only sold for two months in a small market in Gary, Indiana, in 1956. Can I go home now? That wasn't better, was it? Regardless, after you've dissipated what you've accumulated, you'll be back in that barroom parking lot soon enough. You just have a bit more energy to burn off. Hey, how do you know where I'm going to end up? 
There are fewer of us around. We monitor things via the internet, uh, social media, news, books, etc. Actually, it's just like in Lightning when the time travelers do research to determine when they'll show up in public again. For you, it's this podcast. What? Your mention of Marjorie Van Clemens, a very dear friend of mine, by the way. You mentioned her in one of your episodes, along with the description of a box that Benjamin Franklin and I tinkered with ages ago. That prompted us to listen to future episodes, determining where and when to... You, uh, you, you helped build that fucking box? Yes, in a way. It's a very complicated story involving a lot of drugs, a few prostitutes, and oddly enough, the King of France, a defibrillator, and a small horse named Carl. I'm sorry. What? Never you mind, it's not important at the moment. Eventually, that box was stowed in a basement of an inn and forgotten. Then, I retrieved it and gave it to my friend, Marjorie, for safekeeping. Was she... was she also a... Uh, was she a- Not important. Unbeknownst to me, she passed on, leaving her estate to be sold off. The box among it. You bought it before I could retrieve it, and here we are. Hey, and the English guy in the bar when I left, was is he also... Uh, also does not he- important. We often enlist the help of people within the timeline proper to help us contact each other. They're so helpful and willing. Side note, it is easier than you think to start a cult these days. Hey, ha- how did you know about the time-traveling research in Lightning if you haven't read it? I lied about not reading it. I have. And like you, I believe everyone should read it. It would make for an extraordinary film. Right? Yes, it would. I pictured a young Charlton Heston, or perhaps Rudy Valentino, playing the lead. Brad Pitt? Forgive me, I'm drifting off again. Alas, that is how we know where you'll be and plan accordingly. This all seems kind of nefarious. It's not really. It's more to streamline the absolute cacophony of traveling in time, which can be just awful, but in embarrassingly horrific ways. Many mistakes have been made. I bet. Like what? I can't tell you that. You said it was all just a jumbled mess anyway. Yes, even with us trying very hard to not make it worse. So paradoxes aren't real? Oh no, they're very real and very dangerous. We could indeed destroy the universe. It's happened before, or so I'm told. Huh? It's far beyond my understanding or level of involvement, to be sure. Still... It falls into either manageable and absorbable, or perilous and obliterating the entirety of the universe. Jesus Christ. Uh, We've managed thus far. Well, could you give me one thing? I mean, this is too good. Now that I know, it's, it's managed. I'll relay something of my own experience, as it also may relate to you. Upon my first initial jaunts here and there, I, uh, took advantage... You didn't. I did. I made land deals I knew would be lucrative in the future. I used that to garner influence, rubbing shoulders with royalty, bolstering my own fortunes, and explored the world where my curiosity took me as money no longer mattered. I was, for a time, an aristocratic elite, and still am from time to time, mind you, but it came with a much larger price to pay. Oh. Yes, I alone, via my dealings, uh, inadvertently caused the Dutch tulip bulb market's bubble of 1634. Huh. Wow, that, that's bad. But it doesn't seem to be too bad. I and mean, inadvertently helped along the invention of the guillotine. <clears throat> yeah, that, that might be considered pretty bad. But and inadvertently um, caused the ongoing hostility between the Sunni and Shia Muslims, beginning a little bit after the year 632. Holy shit. You make one off-the-cuff comment about deification and... (sighs) Regardless, mistakes were made. So I was... Approached by someone, and an agreement was made among the group that we will no longer... I will no longer attempt 
to take on grandiose positions in society, nor interact with anyone garnering fame of any sort, as it seems to really muck things up in the long run. In addition to this, I shan't insert myself into world events, which for me is a personal hell. But it's a sacrifice that must be made. Besides, not being able to mix as easily into society is very hard on its own. With all the image-capturing devices, selfies, how many pictures do you need of yourselves and your genitals? I don't think the genital part is as much of a problem as you're making. Oh, it, out. it is, believe me. The billboards that will be made. Ugh. Still, being that mistakes were made with my and my colleagues' past behavior, certain rules now apply for old travelers and new alike. <coughs> Here's the Benjamin Franklin box with the modifications I mentioned. It's been cleaned up and upgraded, in a way. And communications will be much clearer. Um, you will now be able to cleanly project your thoughts onto media. That's a trans-universal feature. It also includes a universal translator of sorts, so all those pesky foreign and alien tongues will now sound like awful, awful English to you. Ah, yes, and this little wooden wonder will now be able to communicate trans-universally both Anna and Kata from this universe. I believe I mentioned that feature earlier, wait, but... Wait, wait, what is Anna, Anna... It's not that important. Now, where... The new agreed-upon rule does apply is here. The box limits who you can communicate with. No uh, big names, only um, other people of that era, perhaps. This will also be monitored and researched far before your interactions. More specifically, those that will leave the timeline soon will be easiest to contact. You you mean you mean become time travelers? I mean die. Those people that will soon die. You can talk as much as you want to them. They're usually not going to be around long enough for it to matter. Jesus, that's, man, that's really dark. Tell that to Marilyn Monroe. I'm pretty sure those aren't the pills you took earlier, Marilyn, I said. What a time to forget my spectacles. Terrible. Jesus, Wow. As I said, mistakes have been made. So there you have it, a new box, a better understanding, and a little more courage. I'm still terrified. Ah, but at least you know that if anyone dies, you wouldn't have been the first to wreak hellish disaster on a large swath of humanity. That's its own kind of comfort, believe you me. Nothing like a little, well, I'm glad I'm not the first to do this, to help a preventable disaster go down. Um, a spoonful of sugar, if you will. I'm still terrified. Oh, calm yourself. I have one more thing for you to do, and then you're out of this attic and on to something. Ready? God, yes. Well, two things, actually, before you leave, which will be shortly. Don't forget to take the Benjamin Franklin box I just gave you. It's it's important. And second, could you be a dear and run down and get the Benjamin Franklin box out of the closet downstairs and bring it back up here? I'm not familiar enough with the layout of your house to not make a mess of things. But the box is right here. The current box is, yes. The unaltered box with its radiation-leaking lid is downstairs under your desk. Fucking time travel bullshit. It is. It really is, Titty. Ah, oh, come on. Fuck. Not you two. It is catchy. You know, it reminds me of the time I was in a heated philosophical debate with Michelle de Montaigne on the psychosexual relevance of the female breast to man's preternatural drive to procreate over rationalization in his movement through his own existence. He thought on this and shrugged and simply said, Titties, they are so great. We got so hammered. I think we must have fallen asleep on the stoop of the mayor's house, rousted awake by an old woman. Her breasts were not that impressive, Titty. Fuck yourself. Rude. Thank you for listening to this help, uh, episode. Episode? Episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of Elton Reads a Book a Week. We made it this far. 
I appreciate it. Thank you so, so, so very much. If you feel like contributing uh, and supporting the podcast, and you can do that through Patreon.com. Uh, I'll leave the uh, the link in the description. Or you can do it through Anchor FM, the, uh, the uh, website for this podcast. Um, and if you know, and if you just want to like, share, and review it, reviews are fantastic. I love a good review. You know, give give it a five star rating. That helps so much too. It's it's amazing how much it uh how much it actually does help. It 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 jacks the podcast up in the uh the charts, I guess, or something. I don't know. I've never gotten that high in one. So, uh, give it a good review if you want to do that. That'd be great. Uh, share it with your friends, uh, your family, your coworkers. So, you know, follow me, follow the podcast on social media, uh, on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. All you have to do is search for Elton Reads a Book a Week and that'll pop up. You know, uh, contact me through all of those too. I'd love to hear from you. I really, 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 really would. That was a lot of goddamn reallys. So thank you again for listening to, uh, to me ramble on about books and stuff. And if you do, if you have a chance, read a book. I mean, pick one up and fucking flip through that shit. Read it. You know, don't let them die out. Thank you so very much.